The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, 1 verse 51. He, God, has showed strength with his arm. He, God, has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Galatians 6, 7. God is not deceived whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap with the proud. God will entrap them with their own traps. You be rest assured in that. Oh, people who hate Jesus, people who hate I'm a Christian, uh, you know, they'll get what they deserve. They'll get vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay, saith the Lord. You just fit, stay faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and keep your prayer life and keep your Bible reading life. And let God take and let God help. He'll do a much better job than you will. He, God, with, the, with this other thing with verse 51, Psalms 98, verse 1, uh, 118, verse 15, Isaiah 40, verse 10. 52. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Job 5.11. How many of the world leaders are off their authority due to God? Adolf Hitler went too far with the Jews and he was cursed. Genesis 12.3 I will curse them that curse thee. The guy killed himself. Committed suicide, we're told. In Revelation 2.13, we read a thing here, Revelation 2.13, I know thy works, where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Well, that's interesting. One day God will set Satan down. Every world leader that rebels against God, God will put down. Second Timothy two twelve. Second Timothy two twelve. You don't need to worry about the leaders. You let God take care of it. Second Timothy two twelve. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. That's interesting. If we suffer on this miserable planet by being Christians and doing what we're supposed to do by the will of God, and those that reject Jesus Christ of authority, God will put them down and raise us up upon thrones, the Bible says, as rain. The outcasts of the world one day will have an opportunity to reign in the world that will be put down. According to God. According to Paul. The Holy Spirit. Those that reject and rebel against God will be put down. And those that love God, we may not get it now, but we'll get it one day. And we won't get it in a sin-cursed world. We'll get it in the millennium as the Lord Jesus Christ removes the curse off the earth and is seated in Jerusalem upon David's throne. Then we will have that reign with Christ. Far better than the reign in this wicked and vile world today that is to be. 
You know, if God were to say, Son, talking to us who have been adopted by Christ and the Holy Spirit, I want you to go be ruler in some little uh, middle, uh, middle American, Central American town or country. You know, if he were to put you, somebody may come and, and overthrow your throne. I want you to go rule the nation by Russia. Russia may overthrow your authority. Because right now it's all under Satan. Matthew 4 and Luke 4. You wait till Satan is bound for a thousand years and Jesus seats a king. And he says, hey, you, you suffered for my name. You suffered for me. Take this city. It's yours to rule and reign over. Lord, I got a revolt over here. James, yes, Lord. You want to go over there and see one of my rulers and, and take care of the matter? Yes, Lord. James or one of the apostles of the Lamb comes over and says, uh, ruler, uh, brother, such and such. Yeah, this, these people are here trying to overthrow. Okay, carry them over to Jesus. Jesus pronounced judgment, and they're casting a the leg of fire. How many people today, present world, have succeeded a government, and they're as wicked as anything, and still going, and still living? Wouldn't you rather have a reign with the Lord Jesus Christ in charge? The curse is gone. Several, the devil is uh, chained up for a thousand years. I'll take that reign. I'll take the suffering now to be under Christ. Luke, 50, Luke 152. He has put down the mighty from their seats. You know, there's been a lot of military dictators. Have you just studied the brief history of Alexander the Great? What brought him down? The bottle. That's it. Wow. What has brought the great presidents of America down? A vote. One president at his inauguration spoke so long and so elegant during a rainstorm that he got pneumonia and died. A few, I think it was weeks after that. Wow. That's great. Hey, we voted for a president. He's dead. One president had to step down. Now, I don't know about what you ever went on there. I was young. But he had to he had to resign his office. I don't know nothing to matter. A couple presidents had to step down by death. That's sad, tragic. Once Jesus Christ reigns in Jerusalem, you're not going to stop that reign. Heaven earth flee away, but he's still going to sit as king in New Jerusalem. And exalt them of low degree. I'm a low degree. The world hates me. I am of the few that go through the straight gate. And I'm of the few that's right now presently trying to serve the Lord and doing right of Christians. Worldly Christians will not reign. What happens to worldly Christians in the millennium? I have no idea, but they're not going to rain. Verse 53, he, God, has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich, he, God, has sent empty away. Luke 16, 
Psalm 34.10, Ezekiel 34.29. God will take care of his. He has filled the hungry with good things. What did Paul say one of his perils were? In hunger. So there were times that the apostle Paul, as good as the servant of Christ that he was, he hungered. You're not guaranteed food. How many Christians died being under persecution for the lack of food and water? Many. The implication of serving God, one will be more poor than rich in a worldly sense. And that is so true when it comes to the Antichrist. When the Antichrist comes, you cannot be a follower of God. You cannot be a child of God and be rich because you've got to receive the mark. That goes for the Jews. What the Antichrist will do, it will be a, a blasphemy of the Jews. Go ask Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. It defies the Old Testament philosophy. The rich are in good with God. Now it will be with the poor. Most of the people that Jesus dealt with that were rich rejected him. Ew, Jesus is sitting with those sinners and publicans. Ew, gross me out. Hey, did Jesus know what that woman did or was? He wouldn't be letting her wash his feet. Look at me, I got a palace, I got a hose. Now, Lazarus, Mary and Martha's brother who was rich, okay, he was right with God. He's one of the exceptions. There are a few exceptions. But that rich man in Luke 16 died and went to hell. The other one in Luke, I'll build bigger, tear everything down, build bigger and all that. Oh, fool. You're going to die tonight. The Bible does have a condemnation of rich people in the New Testament. James writes it over and over and over. And James is a prickly book that's written to the ones that are going to be in a great tribulation. Those that will be rich will receive the mark. That's the only way you can be rich. Now look at 1 Timothy 6.10. First Timothy 6.10, a verse that is mostly unquoted, right? First Timothy 6.10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, the love of it. Which while some coveted after, that violates the Tenth Commandment, they have erred from the faith. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. There are Christians who are saved. And their love for money has drove them away. Money has that thing about you that the more you get, the more you want, you'll never be satisfied. The love of it will, will condemn you. And if you're saved, not to, to hell. 
He'll condemn you at your works at the judgment seat of Christ as it gets burnt up. Luke 1. Mary is saying a mouthful here. By the way, as far as his rich, they follow Mary like she's a god. You know, the, the, the Roman Catholic Church is one of the richest religions in all the world. While the Mexicans are in poor poverty state and all that, they'll have a big fancy church built there. The Roman Catholic Church has their own country, their own police force, their own posters, their own arts. While the entire city of Rome is putrefied and puke and, and disgusting, I, I hear of. And they don't even pay their bills, I'm told. 54. He, God, has hoped, that's old English for help, his servant. Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, which is called Israel, the nation of Israel, no, no Ishmael. In remembrance of his mercy. So, hoping is past participle of help. When? When did this verse happen? What does Mary know? She knows Genesis, Ex Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. All the mercy that he showed them. The book of Judges, they turn against God, he give them a deliverer. They turn against God, he send another deliverer. They asked for a king, he gave him Saul. He said, you know what, I can do better than that. In my mercy, I'll give you David. I'll give you David's son, Solomon. I'll give you a reign of peace. So your temple can be built. And how many kings was it that God's mercy did finally say, you know what, okay, I'm done. I'm finished. How many kings? And in those kings, there were kings that done right. Give him one more chance. Give him one more chance. That's mercy. The entire Old Testament records. And now we have the announcement. Of the soon to be birth of the Messiah. And in Proverbs 13 24, God loves Israel. He's not done with them, He set them aside. You know, we Gentiles are in right now to provoke the Jew to anger. Uh, that's my God you're serving? That blasphemous man that said that he was God? You worship his image and stuff like that? Make movies after him all that? What are you doing? Fifty-five. As he, God, spake to our fathers, To Abraham and to his seed forever. She tells us that God spoke to them that are in Israel. Let's look at Genesis twenty two seventeen. Genesis twenty two seventeen. Look at a few places here. That in blessing, I will bless thee. God speaking. 
and multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, as the sand which is upon the seashore. And in thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Ooh, that's right. You know, Israel's sitting right in the middle of all their enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Where is the gospel of Jesus Christ that came from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Judah? It's all over the world. Because thou hast obeyed my voice, God's voice. <coughs> 1719. 1719. We're going backwards. 1719. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I, God, will establish my God covenant with him, Isaac, for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. 12.1 12, 12, Chapter 12, verse 1 This is God speaking to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. No Ishmael. Sorry. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and out of thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Where's the gospel? It's all over the world. Many families. All families. Wouldn't it be interesting that of all the families in the world, at least one being of every family got saved? That'd be interesting. That would be a really fulfillment of prophecy. If you can trace every saved man that's going to be in New Jerusalem and find out that at least one person, at least one person, at least one person came with all the family. Listen, I know my family right now. I go back to my my grandparents. Both my both my grandparents were saved. My mother is saved. I'm saved. My aunt is saved. My brother is saved. My children are saved. That's, I, didn't, I, lost, I wasn't counting with my finger. That's, how many people in that one family? You know God records the family? You know the born books and chronicles and all that? That would be very interesting. So Abram departed and... As the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Aram. That's God speaking. I'm going to say Sarah. Mary knew that. Psalms 105, verse 6. Mary's a bright girl that we don't give her much credit because the church of Rome gives her too much credit. So Rome gives her too much credit as far as 10. We don't give her enough cr credit on 1. We're not 5 with Mary. Hopefully this study will put it at 5. This is a remarkable woman. Psalms 105 verse 6. O seed of Abraham. His God's servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen, the Jews. He is the Lord our God of who? Abraham, 
Jacob. This judgment is in all the earth. In the family. He has remembered his covenant forever. God don't forget. Unless it's your sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham, that's not enough, and his oath, remember we, we studied uh, in, in Ecclesiastes about oath? God says, I swear by myself an oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob. He made a covenant, he made an oath, he confirmed it. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. And you're going to say that God is done with the Jews? You are a fool. You are a Bible rejecting idiot. Because if you said that God is all done, and it goes with the Thessalonians, that verse, then this would say, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath to unto Isaac. And if you went to the book of Ecclesiastes about oath saying, you would say that God's a liar. And that by swearing to it by himself, he lied. But the Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie and will not lie. What do you do with that? Where Jesus tells, you know, he says about oath, don't swear by heaven, don't swear by uh, the earth, it's God's footstone. We are told over and over in the Bible that when it comes to oaths and, and making swearings by our, our mouth, we ought to be very careful. And here we are in Psalms 105, God is doing that very thing that he warns us because he knows he can fulfill what he says. As much as I am saved and sure saved and know I am saved. No ifs, ands, or buts, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know how secure I, I know I'm saved? I know that the Jewish people will be God's people forever. If God gives up on the Jews, then he'll give up on my soul. And he can't. They were assured by the word of God. We are assured by the sealing of the Holy Spirit. Back to Luke 1. Luke 1.57. Luke 1.57. In Luke 1.57. Fifth, six, okay, yeah. And Mary abode with her about three months. And return to her own house. So Mary does not stay for the full term of John the Baptist. Because John's going to say later on, I, I knew him not. And to make sure he says that, the Bible says that three months. Mary will be three months pregnant when she leaves. Elizabeth will be six months pregnant. Verse 57 will close here. Now the time, now Elizabeth's full time came. Well, now this is full time came that she should be delivered. 57, she's nine months pregnant. Now we run back to chapter 1, verse 23. 123. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his, of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. So verse 24 to 57 is nine months. 
Now let's see. When um, in verse thirty-six, behold, thy cousin Elizabeth shall uh, Elizabeth she has also conceived a son in her own age, and this is the sixth month with her. Okay, so it is nine months. Verse fifty-six. The Mary comes to Elizabeth at six months pregnancy and stays the nine months, but she's not there in 57. She's gone before John the Baptist is born. So, between verses 24 and 57, 34 verses. You have a period of nine months. And that's interesting to know. Because in the Bible, verses could be vast times of period of time. A comma or a period or a semicolon may be thousands of years. A lot of places in the Old Testament, a colon is the church age. And we're going 2,015 years plus or minus in the church age right now. And there's so much that can happen. We're not told about all the things that Elizabeth went through for those nine months. We're not told about Mary, her three months of pregnancy, you know, what her strange cravings, the morning sickness. We're not told about those things. There are things in a period of time in the Bible that is not recorded. There are things that God doesn't want us to know. And this lets you know again, 34 verses or 9 months. That's a long time. In half a chapter. This this chapter right here is 80 verses. Half a half this chapter is 40 verses. And 34 verses, less than half, is about a nine month pregnancy of John the Baptist, who Jesus said is greater of all the women that, of all the men that have been born of a woman. You think that God would tell us a little more about this pregnancy? And we're not. Only thing we're told, she doesn't eat anything in the vine trees, and she, and she keeps herself without wine and, and strong drink. Mary comes up. Mary gives her a, a message about God and about the nation of Israel, and Mary takes off. Are you telling me from verses 46 to 56, that was three months? No. That's probably one afternoon. But... In three months, we're told maybe what happened one afternoon or one evening of Mary's words. I don't think that message was three months long. And that's how you got to read your Bible. You got to realize there are time gaps. You got to rightly divide. There are some things written in the Bible. You read something, then you go to another chapter. It's like, wait a minute, that's out of place. Yes, it was. So how can. David go back to his father and come to Saul, and Saul, who doesn't know who David is, and then, wait a minute, wasn't he the mute? What, what? That's where you got to rightly divide. And that's where you got to realize the Bible is not written in order. Nine months went by in 34 verses to make. Ten verses look like it took three months for her to say, and it didn't take three months. I know some preachers are long-winded. Even they can't do that message in three months. Now, we went many times out of this. We went weeks. Well, weeks is just one, one audio, one video. You gotta realize when you're reading the Bible, you gotta see what time is in the Bible. That may be one of the problems you're having 
trying to understand what you're reading at that point. It may be a time. It may be out, out of place. It may be something that you don't know about. It may take prayer. But we leave off. Elizabeth is about to have the baby, and we'll give her a week to have John the Baptist. 